Hi, my name is Tristy. Welcome to day 11 of the 30 day meme stack Honolulu challenge. Yesterday we left off, um, we, we created our uh, customer server model. Today we're going to look at how that model actually talks to the client side. So the model obviously lives on the, on the server side, um, but we want to track that through and sort of see if we wanted to access the data in this model from our Angular app on the client side, how does that kind of work? And what are the files that, that help make that link possible? But before we do that, a couple of things I noticed just when I finished the video yesterday was that I've actually called surname, surname name, which is a little bit of a weird way to refer to surname. So I'm just going to remove the name. I don't need that to be camel case there. So just surname will do. Um, and then down in referred, we've got a Boolean field. Um, we don't need a default of null um, and we don't need a trim. So I've just removed these two things and just make sure you remove the comma at the end there. Um, all right, so let's, let's go to the next step. So we've got a model. This is our template uh, that we want to push the data through before it goes and lives in the Mongo database. But before the data can kind of push through this schema, it needs to go past the gatekeeper. Uh, and the gatekeeper is where all the rules kind of sit to determine how Mongoose uses this model to put data into or you know, read data from um, the Mongo database. Um, and the way that that works is um, those rules sit in the controller. So if we had look at the controller, uh, we've got this customer server controller over here. And looking through this, um, again at the top, we require Mongoose. So we're saying for this particular file, we're going to use Mongoose again, use the Mongoose package. Um, and we're going we're gonna to refer to um, this concept of a customer. And when we refer to that, what we actually are trying to say is we want to use our mongoose model of customer, which is um, this model over here. So this code uses that model to then um, use that mongoose package to do something with MongoDB. So within this kind of gatekeeper, we've got rules here around uh, creating records, reading records, updating records, um, listing out records, finding um, customers like record customer records using IDs and so on and so forth. So there's a there's a heap of um, kind of rules which which determine how uh, we want Mongoose to deal with MongoDB. So they that kind of brain sits in here. So this is like that gatekeeper. Now in order to use these functions that live in this controller, they are called by using uh, the routes. So we've got the customer server routes and that um, uses the customer's controller as well as the user's controller to um, to kind of uh, enforce or, or refer to the rules that are set up within the controller. So we start with a model that's used by the controller and when we're looking at particular functions in the controller, we use the routes to do that. Okay, so um, that's kind of what's happening on our server side. Now, in order to call these routes, there's there's kind of a couple of ways that that can happen. And the key way is um, on the client side itself. So the client side sends the data through to these routes, which then calls the controller and uses the model. So let's work uh, and take that step back and find the service that's actually performing that function. So if we go to public modules and go to our customers module, when we're dealing with customer related services, we've got this generic service over here. Um, and this this service is, is wrapped up in what is known in sort of Angular terminology as a factory type service. And the service um, is referred to uh, with a tag of customers. Now, if what that means is that when we're uh, when we're writing Angular code, we need to refer to this customer's service or use that customer service to perform certain types of functions. So let's have a look at some of the controllers um, that are living in the customer's module. So if we go to the controllers folder, we've got the customer client controller. And this is, uh, again, all of these files have been set up by the Yeoman generator when we went through the process to set up customers. Um, now, one of the first things you sort of notice up here is one of the dependencies in the 
um, customer's controller is this customer's service. So what that does is um, it hooks the controller to the service, which talks to the routes, which talks to the server controller, which uses the server's model. Um, so there's a few kind of um, files which are kind of glued together to make certain um, functionality possible, um, if you like. So, uh, and then the, the kind of step that's removed from that is um, if we want to call any of these functions, then we can do that using a view. And the view is what appears in the, in the browser. So um, that's kind of the, the part. So you've got the view, um, you've got functions in that view. For example, you might hit a button to create a customer record that um, uses the customer's controller, which um, refers to the customer service, which goes through the routes, uh, which picks up the particular server controller, which uses the model to do something with MongoDB. So there's a few kind of layers, but they, yeah, glued together, they make things happen. So um, when we're looking at this file, um, we're going to spend a bit of time here, and this is going to look quite a bit different when we're when we're done with the app. Um, but let's have a look at what's here at the moment. So we've got uh, a scope um, function for creating a new customer. Um, and at the moment, what it says here is that when you want to create a new customer, so we've got the new um, customers object, and this customers object refers to the customer service that we've, we've referred to up here, or the factory that we've referred to up here. Um, but at the moment, it's, it only allows for mapping to a name field. Now, if you recall, when we first um, visited our customer schema model, we had a, um, a field reference here for name, and that's what's being referred to here. But what about all of these other fields that we've added in um, to our customer schema? How do we refer to those? Well, we actually just need to add them into, um, into this uh, create uh, controller, so or this create function in our um, in our controller. Um, so to do that, we just go through, and I'll just make this smaller so I can refer to the names. I've just got a sort of a cheat sheet over here, um, which is just the the functional um, design post, and um, we'll go through and identify um, our field. So I had first name, and I did have that in camel case. So if I go back to that model, I can see that first name's in camel case. But surname, suburb, country. So let's add those ones in. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to refer to everything using the same name just to keep things consistent. What we need to do at the end is just put in a comma um, to imply that there's another kind of um, thing that we want to pass through. So we've got surname, just use the same um, kind of syntax. Um, surname, uh, we have um, suburb, then we have country, uh, we have industry, Uh, we have email and we have phone and um, we have referred and um, lastly we have channel. All right, so that, that having this data there will help us um, make sure that we've got functionality available to push this data through our service and up to our controller. But there's a couple more things that we um, that we want to have a look at here. So, for example, if we follow this code through, so we're saying when we create a new customer, we want to populate all of these fields. So again, um, these fields are all aligned to the data that we've set up in our model. Um, we want to we want to populate all of these fields, and I'll show you how we actually set up the fields on the view to make that happen. Um, and then once we've once we've kind of populated that data and we've kind of just captured it, we want to then push that through to save that. And we're using 
um, customer save to do that. At the moment, what, what this code says here is that when we get a response um, as part of performing a save, um, we want to change the location. So we want to change the URL and, um, and take the user who's performing the save um, to the individual customer record. So we're going to customers dash um, response ID. Now, if you didn't know where to find that information, you can go to config um, and go to routes and you'll see that if I just work down here, so it's not that one, it's not that one. Oh, hey, this one looks kind of similar. So it's customers and it's got a customer ID. And I wanted to know which view does that map to? Well, that's just on this next line here. So it says view customer client view. Um, and if I go to the view, I can see that there's a customer client view. So that when, when the data is saved, it would push the user to this particular view. So back to our controller. Um, what it also is doing here is that it's going to clear the form fields, the data that lived um, in these fields. And to do that, we just um, we can just copy that, paste it in, and just change um, change that up. So we've got uh, first name, surname, uh, suburb. Country, industry, email, phone, yeah, two more, so referred, and channel at the end. All right, cool. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, tomorrow, what we're going to do is grab all these fields and actually map them to a view that we can actually um, then then use to uh, create our customer records. Um, and I want to show you a little bit of that process before we then um, change some of it up and go down the path of using the modal windows. But it's just good to understand how it all kind of hangs together before we do that. Um, thanks for joining me. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks if you already have. Um, and check out bossable.com for more details. I'll see you tomorrow.